Oh, hey, the descriptions for the new Five Nights at Freddy's books are out. Let's see here. Haps. Steve reluctantly takes a job at the Pizzaplex. Aiden and Jay spook some kids, and Billy wants to be an animatronic. You know, I'll save that one for another day. Somnophobia. Sam's scared of everything, Grady's claustrophobia gets the best of him, and last but not least, Luca is horrified by the Springtrap costume located in Security Breach's roleplay room. Wait, what? What's up, FNF Fanatics? It's me, Nathan, back right here, right now, to talk about the new Five Nights at Freddy's book, because holy cannoli, there's a roleplay room in Security Breach. Never thought I'd hear those words coming out of my mouth, but we need to talk about this, because it has major implications on future events in the series, and might just reveal some of this series' most tantalizing mysteries. But anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, drop me one of those juicy big ol' likes, and subscribe if this type of content is your jam. So now, without further ado, let's get started with today's video. As if Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex couldn't get any weirder, there's a confirmed roleplay room hidden somewhere in its walls. But I'm not so interested in the room itself, but rather its shocking implications given the current context. Now admittedly, we don't have much to go by, but based on the information we have, it's strongly suggested that Springtrap is in this room. And I'm not talking about the one housing the crippled remains of William Afton, but rather the one and only Springtrap from Five Nights at Freddy's 3. But Nathan, I hear you asking. Isn't Springtrap referred to as a costume, therefore he's not the real deal? And you would be right if it wasn't for the earlier games. You see, ever since Five Nights at Freddy's 1, when talking about the original models, Phone Guy has referred to their exterior shell as both a suit and costume. If they happen to see you after hours, probably won't recognize you as a person. They'll, they'll most likely see you as a metal endoskeleton without its costume on. They'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. Now, that wouldn't be so bad if the suits themselves weren't filled with cross beams, wires, and animatronic devices. If you happen to get caught and want to avoid getting stuffed into a Freddy suit, uh, try playing dead. You know, go limp. Then there's a chance that uh, maybe they'll think that you're an empty costume instead. And in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, we learn that this same principle also applies to Springtrap. Uh, hello? Hello, hello? Uh, welcome to your new career as a performer slash entertainer for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, these tapes will provide you with much needed information on how to handle slash climb into slash climb out of mascot costumes. Judging from what we know about the Springtrap costume, it having a chilling effect and all, there's a good case to be made that it was in fact an original costume and not a cheap tacky one made at a later date. But even if it was real, why would Fazbear Entertainment use it for roleplay? After all, this costume is referred to as Springtrap, not Spring Bonnie, and it's impossible for anyone to know him as he is unless they were present for Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Well, recall that in the universe of the games, Fazbear Entertainment made a VR title to cover up the company's dark past. This game, which we know as Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, brought to light many characters and locations from across the franchise, including those never before seen by audiences. So, what does this have to do with Springtrap? Well, nothing. Other than the fact that he's present in this game, appearing as his ruddy withered self, not as the polished form of Spring Bonnie, which audiences formerly knew him as. If we are to assume the VR game was distributed commercially, which seems to be the case, then everyone should know about Springtrap and wouldn't respond negatively towards seeing him in the Pizzaplex, because he's not real. It also explains why Luca refers to him by name instead of by his appearance, because he too has played the game. Now that I think about it, the roleplay area is probably just a game of Five Nights at Freddy's where one person dresses up as the night guard and the others as animatronics. The room itself is a makeshift pizzeria, and they have flashlights and other tools so they can recreate the experience. I swear, Scott, if this is a power move to make Five Nights at Freddy's canon in Five Nights at Freddy's, then you are unarguably a mad genius. Imagine characters in-universe saying in the future, Oh yeah, I played FNAF as a kid, and it's just this silly play playground game? Wait, childhood game? Deadly murder? 
As I was saying, there's also the fact that if Springtrap is a costume, who's to say they don't have other important accessories in the wardrobe as well? We could be seeing a return of the classic suits, or masks worn in the fourth game, which could definitely hold an otherworldly entity. Curse of Dreadbear also had its fair share of masks, and who could forget the animatronic box from the third game, which could very well have been salvaged from the wreckage of Fazbear Frights. As for implications on Security Breach, remember how the game ends with Vanessa still being alive? Well, if they're not the same character, it could explain how Vanny was able to impersonate Vanessa and gain control of the Pizzaplex. I don't know about you, but I'd love an expansion on their story, which is underdeveloped to say the least. Plus the blob, well, it had to get those empty suits from somewhere, right? A story element they could explore, which, let's be honest, isn't going to happen, is what happened to Phone Guy. All we know was that he was stuffed into a Freddy Fazbear suit and then disappeared without a trance. This could be the chance to bring him back and explain where he's been all these years, his soul possessing one of the suits. By far the biggest implication we have is an answer to the Mike Trap series, which, if you didn't know, suggests that Michael Afton was mistaken for William and stuffed inside the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 Springtrap suit, with William Afton becoming Scraptrap instead. It's one of the most confusing pieces of Five Nights at Freddy's lore, but since we're going to be centering on a Springtrap costume, now seems like the most optimal time to touch upon it. I mean, heck! Not even the Freddy Files, a book literally dedicated to solving mysteries, contained the long overdue answer. This has got to be where the truth is revealed. Unfortunately, we won't be finding out anytime soon because this book is slated to release in November, over 8 months from now, but I choose to believe this video wasn't a complete waste of time and that some things I talked about will come to fruition. Especially the return of the rightful Springtrap because I can't live with myself knowing this is where the character design ended up. I hate this peanut-looking buck-teeth monstrosity! Uh-oh. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Oh, that's a lot of damage! But anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I had a lot of fun writing this, and I'm hoping to do more on the other books in the near future. Like seriously, Billy thinking he's an animatronic? That is definitely a topic for another time. As for today though, what did you think about the content of this video? Do you agree or disagree that this book has future implications on the Five Nights at Freddy series? What events do you want to see play out in the book? Who is Luca and why is he giving me sea monster vibes? Tell me in the comments below. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching and supporting the channel, and thank you for selecting Awesome Gamer Dude, and I'll see you all in the next video, because I always come back. Gamer Dude, over and out.